Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for our Mass, the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. <clears throat> very welcome now to Mass for Sunday and also those who are listening on the airwaves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Today in the Gospel, we hear the story about two men were asked to go into the vineyard the first said no, but he changed his mind later. And the other said yes, but didn't go. It's difficult to change our minds. And th this evening or this afternoon, we're going to look at the gospel and some people who did change their ways for the better. It's not easy to do it but we have to ask for the grace at all times. Let's now just ask the Lord again to remove the worries, the fears, and the distractions from our minds. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to his people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. If you'll honor the Holy One, you'll honor the Lord. You'll honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hasting to attain your promises hears to the treasure of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, Coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. 
Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. To turn around to change, it's not easy. Do you remember when Jesus was in the agony in the garden? It was very difficult for him. He didn't want to take that cross. And he said the words, eventually was able to say, not my will, but your will be done. There's a story in the scriptures about the prodigal son, is there not? He went off and squandered all the money. And then one day he said, I'll go back home and I'll tell my father I am sorry. I will go home and tell my father I have sinned. We fall but can get back up. Jesus on the way to Calvary, Three times he fell. The addicted person is not easy to get up over and over again. God loves the effort. I remember the beautiful story of Dorothy Day, who... um, lost a child early in her life. But she said, I knew God forgave me when he gave me another child. Tamara was her name. St. Paul was completely on the wrong road. We have this in scripture again. And then he had some kind of an apparition. Who are you, sir? I am Jesus who you are persecuting. We have St. Augustine, St. Monica, his mother, continued to pray for him. Eventually he changed, became a Catholic, led a great life. We have the likes of Matt Talbert from Ireland, Dublin, known as the Dublin drunk. But eventually he was able to change his life around and give up the alcohol and start going to daily mass. He's now up for canonization, the early stages. Look at the two thieves on the cross, one at either side of Jesus. Even at the last moment, one of them turned to recognize Jesus and asked that he would be with him in heaven. He asked for forgiveness, basically. This day you will be with me in heaven. It's never, it's never too late to change for the good in the Lord's eyes. This gospel again today, two sons, go and work in the vineyard. I will not, the first said, but afterwards he thought about it and changed his mind and went. The second, yes, sir, I'll go, but he did not go. Jesus goes on to say in the gospel, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you because they believed, they changed. The road, the journey through life has many difficult parts to it. It's not easy. There are times over and over again where we have to change, where you have to let things go. As the saying goes, no one gets a free ride through life. The crosses are always there. 
Why were the tax collectors and prostitutes entering the kingdom of heaven? Because when they encountered Jesus, they found in him what they formerly were looking for in their addictions. I remember after 16 years of work, one day I said in work, I'm leaving, I'm going into the priesthood. People looked at me and thought I was crazy. But when you believe that God wants you on a path, you have to pray for the grace to try and get on it. It's very easy to go left or right of that path. We're all human and we all need God's grace. The first reading today says, if he turns from his wickedness, does what is right, he shall secure his life. Psalm 25 says, the sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Now I want to talk very plainly, simply, in today's world that we live in. You heard of opiates, didn't you? What are opiates? Well, they're painkillers. Nice word for them, isn't it? They're highly addictive, prescribed to treat pain. But unfortunately, we're human. And we can get addicted to them very easy. Nothing to do with your status in life. Nothing to do how clever you are or how much money you have. Anyone can get addicted very simply and very easily. And the amount of people who get addicted to painkillers is enormous. I want to tell you a life story or a true story here. I'm taking it from the cross of addiction. It's the stations of the cross for addictive people, personality. They were edited by a man called Barry Matthews. But I want to read to you what was said about the fort. Station of the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing by her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. I'm going to read to you and probably all who are in this church tonight and those listening on the airwaves know someone in a similar situation to this woman's story that I'm going to read. I'm reading it again because the whole theme of the gospel today is turning around and changing. This is a reflection by Kitty, the mother of an addict son. And this is the reflection on the fourth station. My son has suffered much over the years, she says. He never really liked school and got involved with a group of friends who influenced him negatively. When he was a teenager, he began to miss school, and I suspected that he was smoking and drinking. My husband and I tried our best for him, but at every chance, he rebelled against us. Reading the line, she says, this is your son, says everything that we ever said, the fourth station. We always knew, regardless of what happened, we had to stand by our son exactly because he was our son. Many people told us that we had to let him go and not worry about him. But even though the advice was well meant, 
It was not something we felt we could do at that time. Prayer was very important to me, especially as there were days that I felt I had no hope. Times when I felt so alone. I worried for my son every day when he was not with us, and I feared for what would happen to him. I prayed each day to Our Lady, knowing that she had seen her son walk away from her burdened by his cross and was going in a direction that she couldn't understand. When I found out my son was taking drugs, my heart broke. And we argued and he left. We didn't even have a phone number for him. When we finally got word that he was in custody, having been caught using, I felt so relieved to hear that he was alive. When we spoke to him, he blamed us for his troubles. This was very hard, and it took a long time to understand that he was simply taking out his frustration on us. Eventually, eventually my son went for addiction treatment. It took him some time to get close to the son we remembered due to the trauma that he faced. But he did face it. He spoke to us recently and told us there was no place like home. And this was the time that I knew he was back to himself. I thank God for giving me my son and I'm thankful for the strength to help my son through this difficulty. God grant to all parents the serenity to accept the trials that befall their children, the courage to stay strong and know your love for them, and the wisdom to know what to say. In this counter of this woman, the story of her son, she says, eventually, my son went to treatment. And she says, but he did face the trauma. The mother thanks God for the strength that she was able to hang in there. Let me leave you with the authentic serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in heaven. Help me to surrender the courage to change the things I can. We pray now as we continue Mass. In our own lives first, we know there are many things we need to change. But it's going to be one step at a time. We cannot do it alone. The 12 step programs that are out there today, they're all based on a higher power. And the higher power is Jesus Christ. We have to trust in Him. And as we pray for all those that we know who are addicted in many different ways, we pray that they have the strength to overcome it. Amen. Let us now humbly profess 
our faith in one God, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we humbly raise our hearts, our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to sustain and inspire them in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may God guide all people in their efforts to combat and treat global health threats. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illness, anxiety, or depression, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our local community and for all who work to ensure its health and safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the souls of the faithful departed, may they be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom by the communion of saints, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for Susan Nephew Antonio Souza Mont's mind, let us pray to the Lord. We continue now to pray for the young children who made their first Holy Communion this morning and those who will make it Sunday, Saturday coming. We pray that the parents would continue to bring them to church. Let us pray to the Lord. We just pause now for a moment in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you know the needs of all who are present in this church and those who are listening on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Anthony, Saint Paul, Saint Andrew, as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. again come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with it, him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. 
I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it. Sanctify it. Render it like unto your own. Amen.
Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O oh virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O oh mother of the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Next Saturday, October 3rd, the second group of students will receive their first communion at St. Andrew's Church. Please remember them in your prayers. Congratulations to the new offices of the Women of Faith. The women's group continues to be a great asset to the parish, and we appreciate all the work they do for the church. The faith formation classes will begin on October 11th for grades one and two, and confirmation one, grade nine, at St. Andrews at 9, 10 a.m. The schedule will be posted on the website. On Columbus Day, Monday, October 12th, there will be a Peace Mass at St. Mary's Cathedral in Fall River. See the bulletin for details. Looking for musicians to assist at the monthly healing masses, please see bulletin for contact information. There's plenty of information in the bulletin. Please remember to take one home and share all that is going on in our parish. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his debt, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just to remind you, take the bulletin home, even though you may have read it, leave it somewhere, use it as an evangelizing tool. I'm still getting calls today. Is, is, are the churches open, Father? Oh, I didn't know that. So uh, put the bulletin somewhere so people will see it. Give it to the nursing homes. We have plenty of them. We get a lot printed every week, and there's a lot left over. So we do, we print it as an evangelizing tool. Wherever you put it, somebody might pick it up and see something in there that would inspire them to even come back to church. So again, uh, let people know that the churches are open at the moment. We rely some who are sick and those who may be elderly cannot come to church. That's why we have it on the live stream. But for all others, you should be in church if you're healthy and the churches are open in the whole of Fall River Diocese. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence, and may the week be one of peace and health for all of you. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.